Hey everybody. Okay. For the record, this is the fifth take on this video. I have recorded it four other times and there have been technical issues, uh, audio issues. Um, I hope I got it sorted. Uh, did some Googling and I uh, think I might have found why it was happening. So hopefully now this video will go smooth sailing. Um, I know last last video I said that I was going to talk about customizing workspaces, but I just think in terms of hi pup, I just think in terms of importance and usability, and uh, yeah, I think that there are a lot of other things that are a little more important. Not to say that that isn't kind of critical to your workflow, customizing your workspace and making sure that it's set up for you, but there are a lot of um, processing tricks that uh, will hopefully be more helpful, um, just showing you how to use the tools that you have. So uh, I decided today I'm going to talk about cloning. I was working on this image from a couple years ago, and uh, cloning came up, and I realized that there are a couple things that I do uh, that might be helpful to people. And uh, if you're like me and you don't like uh, any stray blade of grass, any bright pixel, any uh, tangency coming in from the side edges or, uh, you know, overly bright flowers or flowers that are uh, random colors or colors that just don't fit in the overall scheme. Um, you know, sometimes there's so much going on in a shot that simplifying the color palette and using colors that play well with each other can really help soothe that out and uh, allow you to have pretty complex and dynamic composition without having it feel too chaotic. So, um, yeah, let's get into it. Uh, the first couple things I'm going to show you are pretty simple but super useful. Um, there are a lot of distractions in this shot and right now it might not look like it but let me turn this layer off do you see all those little bright yellow there's a couple a couple of random things around the edge of the image on on the left and the bottom here a lot of yellow, a lot of yellow stuff cloned out from here it's just kind of cluttering things up, so I decided I wanted to clone a lot of it out. And uh, I want to show you guys how I did it, because uh, when you clone a lot of stuff out, it's very easy to start to see repetitive patterns or shapes and tones repeated throughout the image. So you have to come up with ways to camouflage it. Luckily, we've got a scene here that, you know, there's a lot of interwoven lines and textures and stuff like that that's going to help a lot of this stuff just kind of disappear but uh, we can still do things that make it look even more camouflaged just completely make these things disappear like they were never there um, so i'm going to start by making a blank layer and since we're going to take care of some of these brighter spots first i'm going to choose a blend mode that uh, allows you to darken things and the obvious one is darken Multiply will work for hit for this as well. Um, we're going to use clone tool, so we hit S for clone, and we're going to come up here to our brush blend mode, and we're going to change that to darken as well. Now, I'm going to zoom in to maybe some of these brighter areas that were kind of distracting me. Let's start with uh, these rocks here. Okay, so not to say that these are super duper distracting, but just to use as an example, uh, these are pretty small in scale, but you know, there's a lot of leaves here and they kind of have a direction and, uh, you know, the lights hitting them from one particular side. So we just got to be careful that we're not like using the same pattern, uh, where we're blending in, where we're cloning to, to hide. So I'm just going to grab some stuff over here. First, let me make sure that my clone tool because I'm going to show you guys how to use some of this stuff in a second, but uh, let's just now start painting in to some of these areas. And you can see that it's painting over 
the brighter areas, but allowing the things that are darker in those areas to be mostly revealed. Now, it's not perfect, so I do still recommend being a little careful, but basically anything in that area that is lighter in tone than where you're sourcing is going to be replaced by those pixels. So it's just a way of taking the variation of tones and colors from one area with certain transparent areas because not all of those um, pixels are gonna be transferred over and using that to create camouflage and hide certain things. So I'll try that again. I'll make a smaller brush here and I'll make sure that I have a little bit of hardness. And the reason that I add some hardness there is that you can see that on this focal plane, how far away these flowers and leaves are from us, but there is a natural feather, a natural blur on the edge of everything. So I would try to get the edge of the clone tool to match that. So when I go in here to blend around branches, I can kind of mimic that same blur. And as you make your brush smaller, that does need to get softer. You can see that's still pretty obvious, but if I soften that up, it should blend a lot better. Let's just take some practice and uh, getting familiar with, you know, I'm using a mouse right now, but I should be using my Wacom tablet and the pressure of the Wacom tablet would really help in this particular situation. Uh, but you can still get the idea here that this darkened blend mode is just basically covering up any of the brighter pixels. And that's just really useful for hiding things without creating repeating patterns. And lighten would work exactly the same way. So you would make a new layer, set to lighten, change your clone tool to lighten as well. And now let's say we've got some of these dark areas down in here that are a bit distracting. You know, I'm sure some of you are saying, well, why don't you just target those with a luminosity mask and add a levels or curves adjustment and brighten them up. Certainly you could do that. And like many other things, almost everything else in Photoshop, there's half a dozen ways or more to use every tool. So this is just one of the ways. And, you know, sometimes being efficient means using a tool that you're using for other things to kill another bird, so to speak. Um, so let's say we want to fill in that dark area. We can do exactly the same thing. Let's grab some uh, dark green foliage here and let's try lowering the opacity, only bringing this in a little bit. Just paint that into these dark areas and you can see it's only revealing that in the areas that are darker than where I'm cloning from. So see what that did for us without, because we have so much texture and stuff happening already, that stuff just, you know, fades away. And, uh, and again, remember that this information, even though we're just working on little leaves and stuff here, um, is really useful in a lot of other situations when it comes to uh, landscapes, sand dunes, you know, and the ripples and the texture frequency separation works for that. And that also uses cloning and blend modes as well. So um, it's, it's pretty useful, pretty useful tool and, uh, and a way to use a tool. So uh, that was one, that was one little trick. Um, so for the sake of kind of moving through this pretty quick, uh, the next thing I want to show you is how to clone. Let's say we want to clone a flower. Let's say I already cloned a few in here, maybe four or five flowers. There are already tons here, um, but just a couple areas were pretty bare. And I had some dark, uh, dark spots that I wanted to fill in. And, and what better way to fill them in than with a flower that's from somewhere else in the scene? Uh, and not all of them were this uniform pink either. I had to do a lot of color work there. But uh, you know, the first thing I would say and would suggest not doing is cloning a flower directly next to the flower you're sourcing from and uh, definitely not exactly on the other side of the center line. So uh, not in a symmetrical location. So I wouldn't do it over here. Now, you might ask, are you going to do that anyway? And the answer is yes and no because I'm going to show you how to use the clone source clone tool 
properties. And uh, so let's say we want to use this guy right here. And we'll put him right here. Okay, so first thing we want to do, make a new layer. And we're just going to use normal and normal here. Um, we want to bring in every pixel of that flower. And we don't want it to be broken up. Uh, we don't want the pattern to be broken up. We want the whole flower. So we're just going to use normal. And, uh, you know, we're just cloning in a flower. So we can, we can mask it in or mask out whatever we don't need. So that flower wants to go there. And we want to make it a little bigger. Let's make it 110%. That's going to make it 10% larger than it was. Now we can see that that is kind of rotated counterclockwise a few degrees. And if we're going to flip it horizontally, and we want it to go the same angle, because if it's exactly mirrored and going the same angle, that's the symmetry is going to be obvious, at least I feel like anyway. So we're going to go negative 10 degrees here. We're just going to give it a kind of a random rotation so that it just doesn't look like what we're cloning from. And we've already made it bigger, we flipped it, we've changed the angle. Now let's get into cloning. I'm going to source right here. Now, just paint that in. I did not realize that my opacity was down, so just go over it a few times. And I like to overpaint because I want to have some meat around the edge to blend in around leaves and stuff like that and make it seamless. I'll probably end up blending a lot of this away since I've done this five times now and I, I know what I'm going to keep and what I'm not. Um, but that looks pretty good for now. And uh, yeah, you can see that it's a little bit bigger and it's turned and it's leveled out a little bit. And uh, now all we need to do is go in there with a mask and a brush tool. So we'll make sure that we uh, pay attention to our brush radius, just like we did our clone tool radius. And the smaller we get, the more we have to pay attention to that. But let's get in there and at least start hogging away some of this stuff we don't need. Make sure we're on brush, 100% opacity. Make sure we're on black. Okay, let's paint this away. I'm just going to kind of get close to the edge because I know I'm going to come back with a smaller brush in a minute. We're going to leave that whole big leaf. Why not? Save us a little bit of work. All right, get smaller. Soften this brush up a bit. See, I'm not painting into the flower because I want to make sure that it stays uh, nice and feathered and that there's no obvious transitions there. Again, you know, small, seemingly insignificant example, but this comes up a lot with a lot of different things. But being able to manipulate what happens when you clone is pretty handy, you know. And again, some of you might be like, well, why don't you just, you know, clone it normally? on a layer and then just transform that layer. And again, that is another way to do it, but that's not this way. All right, now what I like to do, add a little bit of a feather to this. It's just gonna soften things up, soften that transition up. Now it kind of sticks out, right? Like it, it's just a different amount of contrast. We, we scaled it up. One of the things we can do is clip a contrast adjustment and just soften it. So if you want to add flowers, that's one way to do it. And uh, it's just a way to use the clone tool uh, to, you know, make sure that they don't look like the flowers you're cloning from. But yeah, hope that was useful. Hopefully this is the last and final take. And you guys found something useful in this. I don't know what the next video is going to be. Um, but yeah, I'll see you next time. Thanks.